In this video, we're going to discuss rotor droop, settling with power, and vortex ring state. Put very simply, rotor droop occurs anytime you demand more from the engines than the engines can give you. All right, so according to our perf page, we have 100% dual engine max torque for our conditions, which, by the way, are set to Afghanistan. So this is a base altitude of 5,000 feet and 30 degrees, and obviously we are in a very heavy helicopter. Not that the weight of the helicopter has any bearing on uh, max torque, because it doesn't. That's simply your uh, environmental conditions that drive this value here. So what's going to happen is when I pick this helicopter up to a hover um, and I go over 100%, I can anticipate seeing a TGT of 867 degrees, um, dual engine, 896 single engine, um, and the rotor will start to slow down. So the TGT is going to lock in at 867 the rotor will start to slow down and i'll continue increasing the collective and um, i'm just going to start slowly descending because the rotor is losing lift because the rotor is slowing down all right so i'm just going to bring the aircraft up here oh, i had my pedals turned on whoops let me uh come around here trim my pedal is sticking there. That's why that keeps bouncing like that. I'm going to have to get new pedals eventually. Anyway, a bit of forward cycle trim. Bring the attitude hold on so the position hold will help me out so I can talk and do things here. All right, so now I'm just going to start increasing that collective up to 100%. You can see that the TGT is now locked at one, uh, 867, like I said. And now I'm going to continue increasing the collective above 100%. Notice that the rotor is now starting to slow down. And if I continue co increasing the collective, I'm going to get a low rotor RPM. Rotor RPM there it is. I'll acknowledge that master caution. If I continue increasing the collective, the rotor will continue to droop until I hit about 87, and then the MPDs will kick offline. There it goes. That's because the generators are tied to the... Um, transmission, the transmission is slowed down below the point where the generators can continue supplying power. So now I'm just going to reduce the collective, and I'm going to recover that rotor. Really the only way that uh, you're going to rescue the, or save the helicopter at that point is by reestablishing directional flight, okay? Now, the next thing is settling with power. Settling with power occurs whenever, um, you're trying to, you know, say, make an approach to an OG hover. You don't have OG power, um, which we don't, okay? And we can't go above, say, 100% torque. One, because that's our transmission limit, and going above 100% torque will damage the transmission. And two, um, that's all the power we have. So in this case, I actually am subject to two of these phenomenon. Um, where I can get into a potential rotor droop situation and a settling with power situation, they can kind of manifest or, uh, you know, work together to make my life very difficult, right? So what I'm going to do, transition symbology, I'm just going to take off here. Yep, that pedal's really sticky. Cool. All right, on the go. Whoops, I'm above 100% torque. My bad. It's not good. All right, now what I'm going to try and do is just... Um, come to an OG hover. Now, I'm limited to 100% torque because that's all the power I have and because I don't want to exceed my Chapter 5 limit. So here is settling with power. I have 100% torque applied and I am descending, okay? I don't have the power to arrest this descent. Now, when I get into ground effect, you know, she'll stop and that's, that's fine, no problem. Uh, but that is settling with power. You just don't have the power available to um, maintain the hover, okay? So now the real fun. So I'm going to have to get some altitude here. Next is going to be vortex ring state. Vortex ring state is an actual aerodynamic stall of the main rotor, okay? It is not settling with power. However, settling with power can feed into vortex ring state. And obviously, rotor droop can make it a lot worse, too. Climbing on up. Now, 
Now, in order to get into Vortex Ring State, you have to be less than ETL, have a rate of descent greater than, you know, 300 foot per minute, and then power applied um, 10% um, with insufficient power available for recovery. I'm not going to go all into the crazy aerodynamics of it um, at this point. Maybe later, but just know that um, it is difficult to get into. One of the cool things we did, too, is we did add a VRS warner um, just to kind of, like, let you know that you're getting close to those conditions. All right. Bring in power. We're already descending, so that's just fine. That's what I want. So here is our settling with power. All right. So just kind of reinforcing that. Let me get my myself situated here real quick. We're already descending. Whoa. There we go. All right. So we're already descending. So I'm just going to continue decreasing the collective a little bit. We should start seeing our VRS Warner. There we go. Entering VRS condition. Caution, VRS is developing. Fully developed VRS, full left pedal, right cyclic. There we go. And we recover the aircraft just fine. That is Vortex Ring State, all right? A full-on aerodynamic stall of the main rotor system. To get out of it, we used the Vachard technique. So in this case, with our conventional, uh, well, conventional for me, you know, American rotor, um, it's going to be full left pedal. To increase tail rotor thrust because uh, tail rotor thrust is going to go to the right so it's full left pedal right cyclic um, that's the Vichard technique to get ourselves out of VRS but um, there you go so that should address some of the um, kind of crazier situations and phenomenons you might find yourselves in um, and hopefully answers some questions insofar as what's going on with the aircraft when you're really heavy and why you keep hearing this rotor RPM low or why the aircraft just settles or why the aircraft starts violently shaking.